By the way, sir, so you've asked, right, the Palestine war and Hezbollah. Yes, it can affect everyone in a few ways. You, you, but it, you don't know if it will, but it can big time. And one of them is if it snowballs out of hand, you can get a big oil spike price. And this actually has happened in the past. I'll actually show it to you now. So I have the oil chart here. I'll actually show you the oil chart, put on a regular chart. Now, I know everyone can't see this, but you see back in, you see this? Oil used to be 16 bucks. This is a monthly chart. So oil went up, oh my gosh, oil went up 2.5x in three months. This was Iran, Iran blowing up. And you got to remember, right, people were paying whatever percentage they were paying out of their week for oil, like maybe like it's 20% of the cost. Three months later, it's now, sorry, that's 20% of their wage, weekly wage. Yeah, and then three months later, they're paying 60% of their wage to oil. 60% in three months. That'll, that'll destroy everybody here. So in Australia, what's oil like? I don't know, like uh, petrol's like $1.80. Imagine in three months from now, oil is now five bucks. Game over. Game over. That means if someone has to fill up a 50-liter petrol car, that's $250 all a week. That, that's recession. So that's what actually happens. If, you, if you're curious, friends, war in the Middle East, if it spikes up oil too fast, then everyone has literally no money to spend on luxury anything. It's just, okay, all I can afford is food and oil. And by the way, the food prices also go up because the, the trucks needed to uh, send the food around, they, they, they cost more. So as you can see right now, as we move on in time, where's oil now? Oil is down to 68 bucks, so it's not worried about it. But if oil did do something like, boop, if it went up to like, my gosh, up to like something like here in a big spike, it's game over. That, that's one thing. Yeah, that's, that's one reason it's happened in the past. Um, there's also another, another way it can destabilize is just basically anything to do with disrupting the the military of America and how they move the tanks and the money around. And, you know, because it, not sure everyone knows, you've heard me talk about it. The Middle East is like a crypto tornado cash for America. So they print money, they set, they buy uh, tanks and stuff or whatever the hell they need to do. They do the army stuff. They send it overseas that are fighting proxy wars, and then the other governments on their balance sheets, they're exchanging other things in the background. We can't see it. So you got to think about what the government, the US government has done. It's taken like, if they want to move a billion dollars, it takes a billion dollars, it buys a tank, and then it says to the other government, hey, we're going to give you a billion dollars, give us something else that we want in the currency over there. So they send the billion dollars to Ukraine and then a, and a Ukraine ends up, I don't know, giving them in like gold or or basically or their form of cash somewhere else from a bank that nobody else in America can see. So it's in another account. And then America can have, now they have that billion dollars and now they can spend it however they want in the Middle East. They can go fund more wars. They can do stuff that's black budget things. They can even do UFO tech stuff. They can do, who knows what they're doing, right? Just, but that's a tornado cash. So, but if that gets disrupted, might be game over. Because um, if that gets disrupted, what ends up happening is you got to think about it, what they want to do. So if you stop their tornado cash thing, what are you actually stopping? You're stopping the U.S. government from being able to like buy, make a tank and weapons and send it over there. But why would it stop? It's because there's maybe a bit too much peace. Which we're like, wait a minute, but before peace is good, yeah, but if their plans and operations have slowed down and they have to do some bribing, the military, right, they'll work with Israel, they will end up basically poking a bear somewhere to get a war to start. They'll basically stoke the fire. You know, so if things get too quiet and they have to do something, they'll they'll basically they'll warmonger. 
So you never know. Israel maybe comes out, blows some Palestinian kid heads, kids' head off, and they start bombing themselves. That's what they do. They actually do that. That's been happening. You ever wonder why things are going out of nowhere, and then there's a bomb that just goes land somewhere? It's a try instigated as well. And then you also have, what if one of the military leaders or one of the Israeli prime ministers or whatever, they want to keep power. Conservatives keep power more if there's a war going on. They're like considered like wartime people. So as you, I know, but the, the, just, all of this can happen. All of this can happen. And, and here's the thing. The market, if it knows ahead of time, stocks are okay. If it knows ahead of time, if you can see it happening and it can price it in and Russia, Ukraine, it's okay. What it doesn't like is if it freaking wakes up over a weekend, S&P 500's down, the stock market, US stock market's down 5%, and no one knows what the hell's going on. That's what it doesn't like, okay? So fingers crossed we don't get that. We don't know. So right now, though, oil is basically saying there's weak demand coming, which is it's pretty good. That means inflation down. But, you know, the, tomorrow's not guaranteed. I guess we'll see what happens.